Hi, I'm Vicky from Rockstars and Royalty. In this series, I'm going to show you how I turn this sketch into a gown, how I make the accessories to go with it, and how I style the whole look. In part one, I showed you how I made the corset. In part two, I showed you how I made the skirt and attached it to the corset. In this part, I'm going to show you how I add all the embellishments to the corset, how I create the straps, how I make the tulle cape sleeves, and how I finish the dress off. So I still need to add the eyelets to the back of the corset and the panel underneath the lacing once all the embellishments are done. So I've got the offcuts of the tulle and the rest of the tulle edging. I've got my little drawing here just for reference as I'm pinning things on. I've got lots of pairs of these green leaf appliques. I've got my pin cushion, which is on elastic, so I can wear it around my wrist, which makes it easier. And I've got a pair of little pointy scissors. I've got all of my red and pink floral appliques, which I'll be cutting up as I sew them on. I don't want to use them in big pieces, so I'll be cutting out individual flowers and leaves as I go to make the shapes right. And then I've got my three colours of chiffon flowers, which I'll be cutting off the ribbon and using individually. I'm going to start by using some of the leaf appliques to create the straps. Now I want everything to be balanced but not symmetrical so I'm not using a mirrored pair for this. Then I'm going to do the same on the back again not using a mirrored pair. Next I'm going to keep using the green leaves to kind of make a base for the flowers and I want them coming down onto the skirt as well. really happy with how the leaves are looking and how the straps are looking. I'm going to sew all of these on using a clear thread now. Here's how the dress is looking with all the leaves sewn onto the corset. Next I'm going to stitch down all the leaves from the join downwards onto the skirt. I wanted to do this with the dress on the mannequin so that they're sat exactly where I want them to sit. So that I make sure that I'm only stitching through the top layer of the tulle. And also as I stitch if there's flowers underneath I'm going to cut away some of the organza and um, make sure that I'm not hiding too much of the embroidery and make sure these flowers can still stand up and they're not squashed. To make the tulle cape sleeves, I'm going to cut two pieces of tulle that are 120 inches or 305 centimetres long and 50 inches or 127 centimetres wide. I'm then going to curve the front, so from 50 inches there and 50 inches across, this is going to be 50 inches all the way around here. This next five inches is the bit that then attaches to the shoulders and this whole bit is then the back of it. Um, I'm actually going to just cut a slight curve on both of these corners just to round it off a little bit. So this is the part that will hang down sort of straight from your shoulder down your arm and down the side of the dress and then this part will drape to form the front and this part will drape to form the back. You could alter all of these dimensions to get the drape that you want. You can do really small ones just by cutting a, a smaller part. If you want it just to come down to your elbow just measure from your shoulder to your elbow and curve it here and you can still have it really long at the back so it's a really versatile way to add pretty fluttery floaty sleeves. I've cut both of my tulle cape sleeves and pinned them on. I cut them to the exact size and shape in my little diagram that I showed you. So you can see the front bit hangs down like that and then it's an even length all around the side here 
and then as it gets towards the back it starts getting longer and then the long wide parts hang down the back. I'm going to pin some more of the leaves coming down onto the sleeves which is what I drew in my little sketch and then I'm going to start pinning all the flowers on. So I've got the um, flowers left over from this which I spent <laughs> when I was having my hair done today while my bleach was doing I spent a lot of time cutting them out. Um, I've got all the red and pink flowers and I've got more leaves as well so once I've sewn these into place I'm going to cut and pin all the flowers all over the corset some coming down onto the skirt as well until I'm happy with how it looks. the dress is looking with all of the flowers pinned on so because we went to great lengths to get that lovely corseted shape with the narrow waist and then the curve onto the hips I've made sure I've only put really flat flowers on the waist because you don't want to be adding any bulk back there so what you can do is add the bulky flowers on the hips and the shoulders and then that with the full skirt then helps to exaggerate the small waist even more as I sew the flowers on, I'm also going to be adding these Swarovski crystals and pearls, which I've got in various sizes and various shades of clear and pink and red. I've also got a selection of flat back crystals. These aren't Swarovski, but they're still really sparkly. So I've got reds, pinks and light pinks, and I'll be adding those with gemstone glue. making my panel to go underneath the lacing at the back of the corset I've cut two layers of calico and I've added some boning and a kind of ladder pattern to it so we need to support it vertically and horizontally so the size will vary that you'll need to make depending on the size of the gap at the back of your corset mine is five inches at the top it's ten inches long and it's three inches wide at the bottom I just use plastic boning for these panels because it doesn't need the strength of steel boning. The plastic boning is enough just to give it the support that you need. Next I've taken some off cuts from the fabrics I used to make the dress. So I've got a layer of satin which is satin side up and then sequins right side up and then the floral tulle right side up. Then I've got my next layer of satin right side down which will be the inside. So next I'm going to put my bone pieces of calico with the boning side up on top of all those layers of fabric and I'm going to pin them into place and trim the excess. Now it's trimmed I'm just going to fold the seam allowances back so I'm going to fold it down to the first layer of satin coming this way and then fold all the other layers going that way and pin it into place and then the same at this end. 
and now I'm going to sew around these three sides and then turn it in the right way through the opening that we've left here. So that's how it looks turned through. I'm going to keep pinning down this side and hand sew it into place. I'm just going to take that little flower off because it's right in the way there. Then I'm going to hand applique some of the flowers and leaves that I've used on the corset part of the dress just so it matches completely and looks like a continuous piece of fabric once the corset's laced up. So I'm going to use these off cuts without the three dimensional flowers on because once the this is under the ribbons we don't want the flowers to catch on the ribbons as the corset's being laced up. And remember as well it's only the middle part of this you'll see once everything's laced up so you don't need to worry about the edges too much because they'll be underneath the edges of the corset with the eyelets. So I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to hand sew these into place and that's our panel done. Next I'm going to put the eyelets in the back of the corset. I use these eyelets that come with the backs and um, I think they're called grommets in the US. I've marked between the two straight steel bits of boning at the back of the corset. My marks are one inch apart and starting just down from the top and just up from the seam where the skirt joins on. And then I've also marked halfway between that gap there so I know where to make my hole and I've done that on both sides of the corset. And I always do this bit on the floor because my floor is concrete so it's really strong to hammer into whereas my desk wobbles a little bit. Next I'm going to take an awl. I'm going to push that through the centre of this cross here, through all the layers, which makes a hole. Next I'm going to take this little tapered metal tool, I'm sorry I don't know what it's called, or I think I got it at a car boot sale years ago. Um, I've seen people use knitting needles as an alternative for this, so you need something that's going to stretch your hole. You don't want to cut a hole the size that your eyelet or grommet is, otherwise it will just fray. See, I'm going through one of my leaf appliques there. Then you take the front half of the eyelet, I put it on the end of my little tool, and then I use that to pop it back through. Then I take the back with the back of the eyelet, pop that in, Take the front of the closing tool and hammer it in. And that's how it looks on the outside and that's how it looks on the inside. Because we use this tool to stretch the hole, the fabric shouldn't fray out from behind it and it's really strong. So I'm going to go ahead and do all of the others down both sides of the back. Okay, the eyelets are all in and I've sewn the panel in as well. Now I just sew this with a few stitches at the top here so that as it's laced up it can have a little bit of movement. So the last job now is to put the ribbon in and I'm using six meters of red ribbon. Um, I actually had to buy two three meter lengths so I've knotted them at one end but the knot will hide under there. They were out of the red that I needed in the length that I needed so I'll replace it at some point when I can but this will work for now. So the last job to do is to put the ribbon in and lace it up and then I'll be back to show you the finished dress on the mannequin and then in part four I'm going to be decorating shoes to go with it. Part five I'll be showing you how I make the headpiece to go with it and part six will be the wig and makeup look to go with it and then the finished look all together. Please subscribe if you haven't already, click the little bell so that you get notified as soon as the next videos are up and I will see you in the next video.